Bennett, will you relax? I can hear you breathing. This is a really terrible brain. Ever met the great Dukoski before? Expect two minutes tops. Is that him? So you're a prize graduate. I know who Mike Webster is. Steve. He was 50. You have my attention. Cape Gannet, a diving bird capable of generating speeds of up to 75 miles per hour, turning itself into a missile as it collides with the face of the sea. The red-head woodpecker can absorb a g-force of 1,000, pecking a tree 12,000 times per day, 85 million times over its lifetime. Bighorn sheep can generate... Bennett. Okay, okay. <clears throat> All of these animals have shock absorbers built into their bodies. The woodpecker's tongue extends through the back of the mouth out of the nostril, encircling the entire cranium. It is the anatomical equivalent of a safety belt for its brain. Human beings, not a single piece of our anatomy protects us from those types of collisions. A human being will get concussed at 60 Gs. A common head-to-head -head contact on a football field? 100 Gs. God did not intend for us to play football. Let's keep God out of this. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh. What are the S's? Uh, they, they steal us. And the O's? The others, obviously. Yes, the other team. Do you even watch football? Uh, no, not at all. But I've been studying Mike Webster's position. The man in the middle is quite deceptively the most violent position on the field. The slaps, the punches, the forearm. It is an unremitting storm of subconcussive blows. The head as a weapon on every single play of every single game, of every single practice from the time he was a little boy to a college man, culminating in an 18-year professional career. By my calculations, Mike Webster sustained more than 70,000 blows to his head. Now, now, these men, these men, these are the fastest. Now, their speed multiplied by the speed of the men who hit them, the G-force is generated, equivalent to hitting them on the helmet with a sledgehammer. All of this triggered a cascading series of neurological events which unleashed killer proteins upon Mike Webster's brain. The tangles invading and strangling his mind from the inside out, like pouring wet concrete down kitchen pipes. As it hardens, it chokes the brain, leaving him unrecognizable even to himself. I don't know football. I've never played. But I am telling you that playing football killed Mike Webster. And I am certain that there are others. And how can you possibly know that? Common sense. But they're either dead or lost in the way that Mike Webster was lost. I'm not interested in common sense. I'm interested in science. And science is knowing. I know from these players' records that their doctors believe they have early Alzheimer's. 
which is statistically impossible. They're too young. Because it's not Alzheimer's. It is this. Actually, I hate it, but as a scientist, I can't deny it. Name it. You have to give this a name. 